Hello all, welcome to the episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today we're looking at Dr. Ellie Am's lecture entitled Solving the Catch-22, the Agenesis of the 1222. This was a lecture given at the AAO on the 3rd of May. Dr. Ellie's lecture was based around his research looking at space closure for patients missing upper maxillary lateral incisors. He spoke about the two treatment options which are available, space opening proposed by Kokic and space closure proposed by Zacherson. And the two types of scenarios where this occurs. Space opening is usually for class one or class three cases where it's non-extraction in the mandibular arch. Space closure, usually for the class two cases with increased overjets and requirements of extractions in the mandible. Now the catch 22, the scenario where we want to close space for the class one or the class three cases. He spoke about the frequency of this and he related it to the etiology. Patients who are missing maxillary lateral incisors tend to have a hypoplastic or retrognathic maxilla. He referenced Bassinho from 2016 in relation to this. But also there's transverse deficiency and Bouillot 2017 showed this for patients missing upper lateral incisors. So what was his research? So he looked at patients who had class 1, class 3 skeletal patterns didn't require extractions in the, in the mandible. They had fixed appliances to achieve space closure, that catch-22 situation. There was no comparison, and his outcomes were to look at the position of the maxilla at the end of treatment, and also the upper incisor inclination. There are some ideas that upper incisor inclination changes in a detrimental direction due to space closure. Now, what was his treatment protocol? So, he achieved this by carrying out rapid palatal expansion initially, class 3 elastics, but the mainstay of his treatment mechanics utilised TADs in the mandibular arch between the lower canines and the lower first premolars. Class 3 elastics from these TADs to the upper second permanent molars, a class 3 rector. Distal loops were placed, also, distal closing loops were also placed from the upper central incisors. Now what did they achieve? Well, through these mechanics, he was able to promote the advancement of the maxilla. SNA improved by 1.3 degrees, which was statistically significant. There, was, there were no statistical changes to the up incisor inclination. He managed to avert the negative change that could take place through space closure in the upper arch. The majority of the space closure took place through metalization of posterior teeth, which was on average five millimeters. So in summary, what Dr. Elliot achieved through his treatment protocol was that of space closure in cases where challenging space closure would occur with likelihood of detrimental effects. Now what I was pleased to say is that Dr. Elliot reported on some of the other side effects from these mechanics. There was a rotation of the maxilla in a counterclockwise direction. There was extrusion of the upper posterior teeth due to the class 3 elastics and intrusion of the anterior teeth. He spoke about his correction of this was through up and down elastics that he used. In summary, I thought it was a well-conducted study that took place. He used some interesting mechanics, but also described the pitfalls of using them. That's it for another episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.